Um, one last question. It's, um, it's, I see a lot of um, moving around also around the crypto. I see, I see people talking about crypto hotels, crypto bars, crypto, you know, it's like a crypto mania. Um, and, and Dubai is especially, you know, a place where uh, this is all happening. I see it happening also in Switzerland, where they're very proactive. Um, we have a friend, you know, that just opened up a, a, a crypto hotel uh, in Italy. Um, but, you know, uh, would you say Dubai was um, uh, was chosen by Carter for this characteristic? What, what you know, why why Dubai? Why why being there? It's, it, it's, it was a choice. Um, made uh, because of all this, uh, this you know, ferment, all this energy. Yeah, as you know, Gabrielle, Dubai is is pressing very hard to be the number one global crypto location. They can see an opportunity here to attract people and companies like myself and Carter uh, to make this their home. Uh, I I left London uh, to come to Dubai for this very reason. Now, what what is this? What are these cases and why is Dubai doing this? Well, we can look through the very modern history of the United Arab Emirates and Dubai in particular. It has remained and is still a very forward thinking and open minded place. The fact that we have the tallest building in the world, uh, artificial islands here shows that, you know, this country thinks without limit uh, and, and in a very uh, uh, forward thinking manner. Crypto and digital assets in general is exactly that. It is thinking without limits. It is breaking existing boundaries. It is shifting the paradigm away from traditional finance and custodian banks towards self-custody uh, and self-care of your financial assets. Therefore, it is a very natural fit, I believe, for a new city, a new country, that it's forging its own profile and trail in the world with a new asset class and a new technology. It's a, it's a marriage made in heaven, quite frankly. And we are seeing real regulation coming out from the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates, uh, the, the financial regulators here, such as DIFC and ADGM, uh, in creating a suitable and, and uh, supportive financial environment for crypto businesses to thrive. Every week, every month, I meet new companies and individuals in the blockchain space that are moving here to set up their business. Uh, and this is going to become, I believe, the number one hub in the world for crypto. Well, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, one last thing for people that want to um, know a little bit more about um, the products, okay? Because I know Carter is active in so many different ways and you have so many projects. I know some, you know, are still, uh, let's say, not talkable, but uh, can you tell us a, a little bit more about, you know, the different kind of uh, uh, products you can offer or, you know, that, that there are out there? Absolutely. So two of the or two or three of the main tenants of, of Carter, what is the, what is the main ethos of our company? Um, firstly, as mentioned, we try to minimize risk as much as possible. We only, I say only, aim to achieve 100% per year. Uh, return for our clients. Now, in traditional markets where I come from, that is a, that is a fantastic return. That is that is amazing, almost unheard of. In crypto, that is rather low. Why? Because we're at the very early stages of adoption. We're in a space that is growing fantastically fast. Thus, great returns can be achieved. But we only, considering our banking backgrounds and our risk management practices, we aim to only achieve 100%. Uh, this is the first aspect of Carter that that we keep very close. Secondly. We are non-custodial. What does that mean? That means if an investor chooses to invest with Carter, they never send us even a single dollar of their capital. That capital, crypto, remains in the client's own wallet, protected by their own keys and passwords and encryption. Carter connects externally via an API, a piece of code, and trades and implemented strategies inside the client's account. We never have the capabilities to remove or withdraw anything from the client's account. I often get asked about the various scams and hacks that occur in crypto. And I get asked, Bilal, how do I know you're not going to run away with the money? Well, quite frankly, we never actually have the money to run away with. Uh, this is rather unique and something that our clients really like. In terms of our strategies, Gabriele, we have four, as you know. 
Uh, the first strategy is a medium to long-term investment strategy where we purchase assets that Carter knows and understands and likes very much in the market and holds them for the medium to long-term. The second strategy is more of a short-term trading strategy where we use algorithmic methods to analyze very quickly short time-based signals in the market, technical analysis basically, in order to place very short-term trades on an algorithmic basis. A third strategy of ours is a DeFi strategy, decentralized finance, where we take advantage of the many yield generating options that are out there for investors. This sphere of DeFi could warrant a conversation in itself. It's very complex. Carter simplifies this by only operating in low risk DeFi protocols, again, aiming for a 100% per year, just like all of our other strategies. And finally, we have a crypto mining strategy where we have physical mining facilities where clients can purchase their own mining machines, which belong to them. They are operated by our expert team in facilities all around the world. And the coins that are mined are delivered straight to the client's wallet. The client has no obligation to be invested across all four. An investor can choose only to invest in one if they like, and they have complete freedom to enter, move, and leave at any time without any restriction from Carter. So this is very interesting what you mentioned uh, um, about your strategies. And also, I think it's very interesting also that the fact that you are bridging, you know, in giving something physical to, to, the, to the investor, I mean, a machine mm -hmm. or a place where his machine is. Uh, it's kind of a bridging between, you know, uh, investing in a house because it's... The, my thinking is, you know, people that were used to, you know, to, to invest in a building, in a house and something that they could touch and feel and, and, you know, that I think they appreciate the fact that they will have a machine or a place where the machine is and they can go and see it and it's working. Um, it's, it's very interesting. Um, well, thank you very much. Uh, it was very, very um, illuminating and uh, I'm sure we have more time to talk about uh, different things. I don't know if you want to give a suggestion, a last, uh, a last word on anything or? Um... Yes, I mean, if anyone is interested to, to learn more about Carter Capital, uh, they can access cartercapital.one.one, where you'll find our contact information and more detail on the strategies. Um, aside from that, Gabriele, it's been a pleasure to, to be with you. Uh, been very aware uh, and supportive of the Institute's uh, activities in the last six to nine months that we have been engaged on a number of projects. Uh, we hope to be able to assist wherever we can because you're really doing fantastic work all around the world. Well, you too. So that's why we partner up and uh, and we're really looking forward to uh, be part of, uh, of your strategies too. <laughs> all right. Well, Indeed. thank you very looking much. You take care. Thank you. You too, Gabriele.